better watch out. <laughs> you better not cry. You better not pout. And I know you know why. Santa Claus is come. He knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. All right. <laughs> you guys got me nervous there for a moment. I thought you would be joining me. Now for our next song, it will be the first of all. <laughs> anyway, with this song, the coming of Santa Claus is foretold. He knows our every move, our every word, our every action. Children are encouraged to be good because Santa Claus is coming. However, in our gospel today, we are not told of the coming of Santa Claus, but of the glorious return of Christ. We are told that Jesus, the Son of Man, the one who truly knows who we are, what we do, and what we say, is coming. And we are told to be ready when he comes. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about this Christmas this year. Last year we didn't get to do a whole lot because of COVID. But this time, I just can't wait. This Christmas will be a very special Christmas because we're going to have a Christmas wedding in Hawaii. My son is finally getting married. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Since Advent is the time to celebrate the coming of Jesus, being thankful is the perfect place for expectancy. Jesus is the greatest gift. He is the wonderful Consoler, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. In receiving the greatest gift of all, we should associate gratefulness with the greatest amount of anticipation. While Advent is a joyous time, our gospel doesn't sound so joyous. It sounds more like an Armageddon or the movie The End Times. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright and anticipation. Yes, that's right. Of what is coming to the world. For the purpose of the heavens will be shaken. Now, how exciting is that? It might sound strange that our gospel reading will focus on the end times and not on Christmas. It might seem confusing at first, but believe it or not, it really is appropriate. There are a lot of similarities between Christmas and the second coming of Christ. 
First, it's true that Jesus came as a cute little baby boy on Christmas Day, but at the second coming, he will come as a conquering king. In both instances, it's still Jesus, the Holy Son of God, who is coming to the world. Second, in both instances, Jesus comes to bring the kingdom of God. At Christmas, he came to establish the kingdom through his teachings, his miracles, his death and resurrection. And at the second coming, Jesus will bring the fulfillment of what he has begun on Christmas. All sins and suffering will be wiped away, and we will enter into eternal life with all the angels and all the saints. Finally, both Christmas and the second coming are times of excitement with awe. At Christmas, we hear angels singing, we see the magnificent star, and we watch Herod tremble with fear. At the second coming, the heavens will open to reveal Jesus shining like the sun, and all who are close to him will face judgment. Both are times of great hope. It calls us to examine and to prepare our life for his coming. We prepare for everything that is important in life. And that is why the church gives us these moments of preparation in Advent. We all have these things in our lives that we're wrestling with and questions that we're struggling with. We all need a turning point. And Advent is that time to step back, to think about who we are and what we're here for, to think of what matters the most and what matters least. St. Paul tells us in our second reading that we should increase and abound in love with one another, to strengthen our hearts, to be blameless in the holiness before our God at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to conduct ourselves pleasing to the Father. Jesus also told us to prepare for the kingdom of righteousness, to be on guard that our hearts is not weighed down in greed, drunkenness, and all worries of life to be alert at all times, and to pray at all times, that we may have the strength to escape all the things that will take place when we stand before Jesus on that final day. Today, we lift the first candle of Advent. Advent candle is a simple way to help us move with anticipation through the weeks until Christmas finally arrives. The flame is a symbol of Jesus, the one who is called the light of the world. These candles get brighter and brighter by the week, as it points, to, points us towards our Lord Jesus Christ. We who follow him will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life as we move closer to the day when we meet Jesus face to face. My dear friends and family, stand in prayer. Stay awake. Do not let your hearts be drowsy. Open your eyes and raise your hands and be transformed by what you see. Jesus is coming.